Let's do it to it, everybody. Welcome to the finals here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Cedric Phillips, Craig Kremples. We are here in the booth. Nick Miller's down in the feature match area, getting ready to do a write-up of our feature match between Todd Stevens, number one overall seed on the SD Tour leaderboard, and Eldrazi Tron against Chris Castro Pell playing Living End. And Chris, welcome to hell, my friend, because you got to go through this again. We've seen this opener before. We have. We this, have. This is the one that's easy to beat. Well, Todd is on five cards, and he did this. Chris had to face this previously in the quarterfinals of a land, a chalice on zero, and a relic, and see if he can overcome it. Well, and Todd just drew a land right off the top of his deck into play. Scried it right to the top. Scried it right to the top. Mm -hmm. It looked like Chris just drew a fulminator mage that turn. Oh, step one. So that lines up very well if Todd is light on lands here. Horror of the Broken Lands has been cycled. Although if Chris doesn't have lands either, it's an issue. Well, there's Copperline Gorge. Looks like he's doing all right. And now Stevens will untap and draw. He will activate. He will play an expedition map. Oh, what a tease. Yep. <laughs> this is getting hard here for Chris. And it's also getting hard for Todd. If his land gets blown up this turn. Okay. A reprieve. Yeah, cycle at Architects of Will. This is such a tough matchup for Chris. Now he's got to face the Relic plus Chalice combo again. Again? Yeah, and they're both light on lands this time. Yeah, let's go to Todd Stevens, who's drawn a copy of Eldrazi Temple. He'll start by activating his Relic. Now he's going to crack his Expedition map. I think we might go see him grab the Mine. Yes. Yeah, it'd be pretty surprising to see him get anything else here. <laughs> I don't think he needs a Ghost Court or anything like that right now, does Stevens, as he's got Tron online and an Endbringer in hand. Architects of Will will be cycled yet again. Now, the plan last time for Chris was hope his opponent didn't draw any lands yep. and hard cast some Street Wraiths. And that worked. Yep. But Stevens has seven mana. Yeah, he has Tron. And this time, Chris does not have the lands. Yes. So it's only getting more difficult here for Chris as he's going to discard a copy of Living End. We're going to go back over to Todd Stevens, who will untap those lands. And maybe most importantly, that Relic of Progenitus. He'll draw a card. It's a Thought Not Seer. This is a good hand. It's got a lot better. <laughs> there's an activation, and now here is Thought Not Seer. I wasn't sure if Stevens was going to go towards Thought Not Seer or Endbringer, but you'll get an idea of what he is working with. That, I believe, is four copies of Fairy Macop. Just rolling on quads. Yep. Along with two Demonic Treads and a Fulminator Mage. Fulminator Mage is the choice. That is exiled as well. Yep, and Chris is going to win the high hand of the night with <laughs> quads Fairy Macop. Now, how, what's Chris's way out of this? It, it starts with Beast Within, right? I, I think it's too late for that. Yeah. Like, honestly, uh, Todd has another big Eldrazi in his hand, so he's got pressure on the board. Chris has basically no graveyard at this point. He's got to get the chalice off of the board in, in order to resolve living in. It's just too many pieces. He's too far behind now. But, yes, it, it, theoretically, it starts with Beast Within getting the chalice off of the board. He'll cycle Street Wraith his way. He's going to fall down 18 to do that. <laughs> Rolling on quads, indeed. <laughs> it's funny, because Fairy Macabre is really good in the format right now, yep. but it's really bad in this matchup. Relic Regena is the draw here for Stevens. Yeah, that card's okay. Yeah. Uh, aptly named Endbringer, perhaps. Another Relic there is Endbringer. And he is yep. tapping the mat, and with good reason, as Todd Stevens is going to win game number one here over Chris castro Rafael. Eldrazi Tron very quickly up a game here over Living End. It's going to be an upset if Living End can get it done here, and it doesn't get any easier. We'll go to that sideboard for Todd Stevens in just a moment. We're going to start with Chris, who's got three Ricochet Trap, three Ingot Chewer. We know those are going to come in, along with the two Shriek Maws, two Dead Gone, two Fulminator Mage, two Beasts Within, and a Brindle Boar. At least he's got cards to bring in, right? Yeah, the Brindle Boar really shines in this matchup. <laughs> oh, is that what it does? Is that what it does? You want to uh, take? You want to take the? You make, are you making sure I'm paying attention? Yeah, just checking to see if you're paying yeah, I'm attention. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. Trust me. <laughs> no, a lot of cards are going to come in here. I I like Beast Within. The Ingot Chewer obviously has to come in. I like Shriek Maw, and I like the Fulminator Mages. That's a lot of cards. That's all the amount of cards to bring in. You know, there's that, that's seven we're looking at here. Th three Chews, two Shrieks. Actually, nine. I take nine. it back. Yeah, yep. two Fulminator Mages, two Beast Withins, and you know, it's pretty easy to say. All right. Um, Fairy Macabre, see ya. Yep. Those are the, probably the first four that go. Sure. I'm not really sure what else you want to do. Uh, potentially, you want to shave some Simeon Spirit Guides. Okay. Uh, okay. You, you might not 
feel obligated to combo off on turn two. Yeah, don't need to go crazy. Yeah. Okay, that makes some sense. Um, the, the Eldrazi deck is, it can be explosive, but not until turn three anyway. Okay. So you can wait a couple of turns. So maybe you want to shave some of those cards. Um, and then there's so many cyclers in the deck that, you know, you, you can take one or two cyclers here or there, shave them. Because you're bringing in, like, ingot, ingot chewers and shriek malls are both creatures that are going to end up in your graveyard. Makes sense. So you'll have enough. If you resolve Living End, he'll be able to kill him. Ideally. He's got yeah. enough creatures in the graveyard that he should be all right. Uh, we're going to Todd Stevens' side. Two Warping Wheel. Great, because it counters sorceries, which means it can counter Living End. you got two Grafdrigger's Cage, which you got to read that card. doesn't do anything against Living End. does not work. It's very strange, but it does not do anything against Living End. you got two Surgical Extractions, two Hanger Back Walkers, two Ratchet Bomb, two Relic of Progenitus, a Worm Coil Engine, a Basilisk Collar, and a Pithing Needle. Yeah, so we like the Warping Wheels here. He already has the full... Place it at Chalice of the Voids. Mm -hmm. It's right where he wants to be. The Relic of Regenesis obviously is a big problem for this Living End deck, so two more of those are going to be coming in. Uh, and then it's a question of if Todd wants to shave some of the more expensive cards from his deck. So if he does, I could see potentially bringing in some Hangerback Walkers or the Worm Coil Engine if he feels like he wants to be a little bit smaller. Well... Those are the options there for both players. As Todd Stevens will be on the draw, Chris Castro-Pell will be on the play with his Living End deck. It's a very tough matchup, but he's gotten by it once. We'll see if he can do it again here momentarily. But we got to talk one last time about that Invitational for Season 1 that's taking place in Roanoke, Virginia, just a couple weeks from now. You take a look at the calendar. There's Grand Prix Las Vegas next week. After that, there's Grand Prix Cleveland in my beautiful hometown and soon to be two-time NBA champions. Well, that's exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah. I agree. And then we'll be going to Roanoke, Virginia for this awesome tournament. June 30th to July 2nd, StarCityGames.com Season 1 Invitational Weekend in Roanoke, Virginia. We hope to see you there. Awesome artists, awesome tournaments. It's going to be an absolute blast. Great way to spend your summer before we head into Season 2 of the SG Tour. I'm looking forward to it. You and me both. I'll be joined by Craig, Matthias Hunt, and Ryan Overturf, and, uh, Nick Miller, the rest of the SG Tour team. We're looking to put on a pretty awesome show. that will be very memorable for everyone who does attend. So we hope to see as many people there as possible. And I know Todd Stevens will be one of them now that he's a Roanoke native. He's originally from Denton, Texas as a 31-year-old with a whole bunch of open top eights. We might be putting a one on this slide very yeah. soon here, Craig. He's got to get one more game. Starting to fill up some slots here. Yeah. Uh, he might have an invitational top eight on the way as well. You know, Eldrazi Tron is his deck. It's his baby. He streams with it so much, helped innovate the deck, and he's done a lot of winning with the deck. Again, third top eight in a row. Had a team tournament with Brennan DeCandio and Tannen Grace. And then in Baltimore two weeks ago, kind of a quiet exit for him. Got knocked out by Brad Nelson in the yep. quarterfinals. A lot of people, I think, forgot that he top eighted two weeks ago, but uh, he's going to make sure no one misses this accomplishment. Chris trying to play spoiler here, and what's a difficult matchup for him? We'll see if he can tie it up. He's going to keep his opening hand, looks like. We'll see if Todd wants to. Now, you, you know that Todd did mulligan to five, game number one. But in a matchup like this, you're just looking for specific cards, I think. Yeah, he found all the right piece, pieces in the first game. So uh, one thing that I do appreciate about Todd is he, he did lose to, to Brad in the top eight two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say, oh, this is a bad matchup. What am I, like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do about it? No, he went back. He played a bunch of games. He tweaked how he's sideboarding a lot. And he, he came back confident. Yeah, that was the big thing that he's told us about uh, a couple of times over the course of this weekend, which is I think I figured out a plan against Grixis Death Shadow in my sideboard. And most yep. people might say, oh, it's a bad matchup. I can't win. I hope I don't get paired against it. Find a new deck. Maybe play that deck. So on and so forth. But he doesn't want to go away from Eldrazi Tron. He knows the deck so well. So he's found a way. And maybe if he wins this tournament, no guarantee, but even a second place finish, we might see a bit of an incline in those ceremonious rejections For again. Sure, yeah. A lot of people only had two in their sideboard this weekend. You might need more than that if you're a Grixis Death Shadow player. 
Horror of the Broken Lance has been cycled. And a copper line gorge is the land here for Chris. Looks like he's just going to pass the turn. There's a power plant, and I'm being led to believe that there might be a warping whale in hand. Maybe. There better be something. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's going to need some big impact plays because he hasn't done anything on turns one and two. We're going to head Chris's way. He's going to play Blackleaf Cliffs. And, and we saw Chris in his previous match play around Warping Whale very effectively. Tron online here for Todd Stevens. It's Mattery Shaper Mania, folks. Big, big payoff. Mm -hmm. Turn three, seven mana. What do you want to do with seven mana? Three twos. De deploy a couple of three twos. What do you want to do with seven mana? <laughs> I know what I want to do with seven mana. Here's a violent outburst. Looks like just a little, just a little baby living end. There it is. Sure, it gives him two threats on the board. Mm -hmm. And the horror of the broken lands is actually great. You know, that, that's a big creature. Yeah, you start cycling, that thing gets huge fast. Here's surgical extraction. I think that's going to take care of horror of the broken. Okay, that, that was big here. Mm -hmm. Take a quick look at living end, really quick, because I think it makes you sacrifice the creatures that are on the battlefield. Each player removes all creature cards in his or her graveyard from the game and sacrifices all creature he or she controls. So that's good because that means the Rattery Shapers will trigger. Yep, a couple triggers coming. Yeah. And now he's got some, uh, some bodies in the graveyard in mm -hmm. case there's any future living ends that get resolved. He's all Surgical Extraction is going to take care of the Horror of the Broken Lands. For Chris, no, no, Chris, no, lay it back down. <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guide, a beast within a couple other creatures in hand. Shriek Maw. Yeah. And Mystery Card. Two mystery cards. Ar <laughs> Architects of Will and looks like a demonic dread. You can't get anything by me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ooh. double surgical Ooh. extraction. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's a beating. Well, it makes a little more sense why he kept. I am a little curious, Craig. If um, maybe you just let it resolve. And then you surgical extraction the living end? Well, yeah, I, I think potentially if, if he's just getting back 1-3-4. Yeah, I think you can beat your Neldrazi deck. You can beat 1-3-4, right? Yeah, you, you definitely let that one come back. And then just get the, the living ends out yeah. of his deck. Because he's always got to worry about that now. Here's Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher off of the uh, Mattery Shapers. Well, those are better when you have Tron. I agree. Chris will draw now. And we'll see if he wants to upkeep Beast Within to break up this Tron. I wouldn't be surprised. Seems like a good use of the card. And we are in Todd Stevens' upkeep. Yes. So he's going to go after the Tower of Power, as most people do. There's a Todd Anderson token. Love it. That's Todd Weiser. And, of course, Todd Stevens known as Todd Light. Here is a Thought Not Seer. Two Simeon Spirit Guides, another copy of Beast Within, a Shriek Maul, which I think might have to go. <laughs> uh, and, a, uh, and a Demonic Dread. It looks like he's going to take Demonic Dread. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I guess Todd's saying, as long as you don't get a big Living End off, I'm going to be just fine this game. Well, Chris has drawn a copy of Living End, so in theory he's only got one left. Yep. Remember, the Living End deck only plays three copies of its namesake card. And the one in his hand would be a little slow to go off. <laughs> decisions, decisions here for Chris. Yeah, I would expect the Shriek Maw. Take care of the Thought Nots here, draw Take card. Take care of the Thought Nots here, draw card. And then he can decide if he wants to cycle from there to potentially draw another card. He also has the ability to hard cast Shriek Maw. I was about to say, he, he, it looks like he's thinking about hard casting it, which also a pretty good option here. These Simeon Spirit guys don't really get better as the game goes long. I think I'm on board with this. 
Oh, and this is... We're getting even more interesting now. We're suspending living ends. Okay. This is tough. We know that Todd has a reality smasher. He picked up another copy of Thought Knots here, too. He can get to work so quick here. Yeah, this is actually really hard way to go about doing it. Kind of goes to show you how difficult the matchup is, though, for Chris. Yeah, there was no really good play for him that turn. Even if he kills the Thought Knots here, he's still facing a bunch of pressure from the Beast Token and, and potentially Reality Smasher. We see Todd drew another Thought Knots here. See how he wants to go about doing this. I think we might see Mindstone first. Yeah. And now you're going to see Thought Not Seer. And then that, we might see that actually just take Shriek Maul. Yeah. Yep. I remember that's exiled. It doesn't go into the graveyard. So I don't know if he's ever going to get time to resolve this living end. Draw a card. Well, all right. He drew a Violent Outburst, which is a copy of Living End. Yes. It's still kind of awkward for him, though. He might be able to catch a Reality Smasher if Todd gets a little bit greedy. Oh, boy. Todd got super greedy. Yeah, he did. So he's going to come with all the creatures. Now, here is Violent Outburst, which is a copy of Living End. But Chris has nothing going on in his graveyard. Mm -hmm. He will draw some extra cards off these Thought Knots here. And Todd has a couple of 3-2s coming back from the vent. Yeah, so sometimes when you play against Living End, you've probably seen this before, you get yourself into a weird loop as the Living End player where it's not just a one-sided wrath anymore. Yep. You're bringing things back for your opponents. One, well, Todd has battled his opponent's graveyard so well that I think he's the only one getting anything here. I think you might be right about that. Yeah. So Chris is going to get the opportunity to draw two cards, which is nice. But what we're also going to see here in a moment, I think, is... Yeah, I think Chris knows it, too, with the big smile. Is his Living End's going to go off again, and Todd's going to get those other things back. Yeah, the Thought Knots here is the Reality Smasher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this might be bad for Chris anyway you slice it. <laughs> the, the loop. The, the hard lock, as you call it. Yeah, demonstrating the wrong loop. Oh, you've got creatures in your graveyard and in play? Yeah. <laughs> All living end. Yeah. Oh, now you still have creatures in your yeah. graveyard and in, in play? play? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I have the living yeah. end again. <laughs> I just have an infinite number of these, right? No, I have three. <laughs> I have three. That's, that's it. Well, we saw it. All its dust in Todd's hand, too. Oh, man, even Hangerback Walker is good against living end. Because you sacrifice the creatures? Jeez. Sure. Not very good when it comes back. True. <laughs> True. No argument there. But yeah, this is this is a tough matchup. My goodness. Right now Todd could uh he could sacrifice the the expedition map to get a tower. And use tower plus mine plus mine stone to make a hanging back walker for three if he wants to, if he feels the need to. Sure. Not sure it's necessary. Yep, looks like he's going to go that route. And as as I just mentioned, he has, he has the all his dust. Even if Chris cycles three or four cards before this living end goes off, the all his dust is just going to clean them all up anyway. Mm -hmm. I think Chris might be in the hardest of locks here, Craig. <laughs> I don't know if there's any escape in this. We're going to see a hanging back walker for three. He's just going to do it via Tron Lance. It's all the same. Todd's going to get three fatties back. Mm -hmm. He's going to strip two cards from his opponent's hand with the Thought Not Sears. Yep. He's going to get two more cards from his Matter Reshapers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who's living in better for here? I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure right now. And, and when we watched the top eight, we didn't see any of this. No. But no. This, this is more of what we expected. Yeah. Here's Beast Within. It's going to kill Hangerback Walker. So there's three Thopters. And he'll get a beast token, too. <laughs> so They're all going away, though. Yeah. All right. Living End will be cast. And there will be some cycling that's going to take place here, I imagine. All right. Cycle Desert Ceridon. That's a big boy. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what else we got? K 
carry it, Tid. That's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did a lot. Oh, we got a Simeon Spirit Guide Cycle, another Ceridon. Right. Building up a little board. Building up a little board. All right, Living End. Oh, he's actually at two as well. Yeah. <laughs> Get back these clowns. So Todd gets back three creatures, two Thought Not Sears and a Reality Smash. She also draws two cards from the Mattery Shapers. Relic. All right, we'll put that one into play. Yeah. <laughs> and Reality Smash is going to go into hand. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it has to do with the All's Dust, right? Yeah. That's the problem. Well, I, I think Todd could win without the All's Dust. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But, that, yeah, that one will definitely close out this game. Uh, we'll exile the Beast within. You, of course, get to keep your lands. And Stevens. I think he gets to, yeah, Chris gets to draw for his turn because Living End comes off on upkeep. Yep. But in a moment here. A lot of things happened. Yeah, in a moment. Not a lot of them really mattered. We're going to see Todd Stevens on tap and cast a very powerful seven mana Eldrazi spell. And what feels like a long time coming is finally here for Todd Stevens as he plays in all his dust and attacks for the win. Yeah. Todd Stevens is going to win this match here over Chris Castro Pell. Two games to zero. Eldrazi Tron will take care of Living End. And it's a long time coming, but I finally get to say it. He is your Charlotte Open champion. Yeah, and, and I think it, in a way, it kind of felt inevitable. Yeah. He, he's just been doing so well so consistently for a long time now. He's been tweaking his deck. He's been putting in so much work. It was just a matter of time until he picked up a W. The, the